War of words between the US and North Korea is intensifying as Pyongyang says a plan to fire missiles over Japan to land in the sea near the US territory of Guam will soon be ready. State media denounced Donald Trump's warnings of fire and fury, saying the US leader was bereft of reason. The US has warned North Korea's actions could mean the end of its regime. Yogita Lamai reports from Seoul. <laughs> A show of strength in Pyongyang. North Korean state television showed a mass of people marching in support of the leadership in the country, even as the government made more threats. These are details of its plan to attack Guam. Four rockets will fly over Japan and land in the Pacific Ocean near the island, it says. It's drills by U.S. bomber aircraft like these, which are stationed at Guam, that have angered Pyongyang. But while a fierce reaction from North Korea is expected, this time, it's matched by aggression from the U.S. president. After saying Pyongyang will be met with fire and fury, Donald Trump boasted about America's nuclear arsenal, a message which will be perceived as another threat by North Korea. It's making people around the world nervous, and many countries have urged restraint. Our strong wish is that uh, uh, the United States uh, keeps calm and refrain from any any moves that uh, would uh, provoke uh, uh, another party into actions uh, that might be dangerous. The border is just about 50 kilometers from here, but things on these streets are not tense. This country has dealt with threats from its neighbor for a long time now. And that's why perhaps people here are unlikely to believe just yet that this war of words will turn into something more. Yogita Lamai, BBC News, Seoul. Yogita Lamai in Seoul and Robin Brandt is also in Seoul now live for us uh, this morning. Um, Robin, the papers here, some of them full of maps of the potential damage that is estimated that North Korea might be able to do if it can get weapons, if it can nuclearize weapons and, and fire them across. It says American West Coast is in the crosshairs. But, I mean, you're sitting right in a country that has been living with this fear, well, for decades. You're right. For a very long time, the people of this city, about 10 million of them, and the people of this country uh, have faced the threat of a military confrontation uh, with the regime uh, in uh, the north. More recently, the rhetoric has escalated, and perhaps so has the threat of maybe even a nuclear Thank confrontation you. You? with the north. But as you heard Yogita say there uh, in her report, it's a drizzly Thursday evening here in Seoul. It's just gone 7 o'clock at night. People have left to go home from work or they're having dinner or whatever else. It's pretty normal here. People here are used to the rhetoric. They're used to the preparations. Uh, I think look to the tone of what we've heard from military representatives uh, here and also government ministries today. We heard from the Joint Chiefs of Staff reminding anyone listening of the very, very close military alliance between uh, South Korea uh, and the United States. That is absolutely crucial to the protection, the defence of people here in this country. And then from the government, well, the foreign ministry uh, urging perhaps in a slightly more conciliatory tone uh, those in the north to stop the sabre rattling and come to the negotiating table and perhaps resume talks aimed at denuclearizing the whole of this peninsula. That reflects, I think, the slightly more conciliatory tone of the new president here, President Moon. And then we've heard from the presidential spokesman in the last couple of hours after a regular scheduled meeting of the country's National Security Council. And they're talking about cooperation with uh, any country uh, that will cooperate in an aim to try and resolve these tensions. Robin, thank you very much indeed. We're going to head from Seoul to the American territory of Guam, where we can speak live to Victoria Guerrero, who is there. Uh, good morning from our perspective. Good evening from yours. Um, you chair a task force for independence for Guam. Um, just tell us, Robin was there outlining some of the thoughts in Seoul um, and, and how people are feeling, but how does it feel to you in Guam at the moment? Well, it's, it's very frustrating um, to be sort of at the center of all of this conflict. Um, Guam, as you mentioned, is uh, U.S. territory um, and, you know, an unincorporated territory at that. So the United States has full sovereignty over the island. And, of course, we are fighting for our people's sovereignty. Uh, the Chamorro people of Guam, we've been here for over 4,000 years. We've been colonized uh, by Spain, the United States, Japan, and the United States again. And 
this recent conflict is reminiscent of World War II when Guam was caught in the middle of a conflict between uh, the U.S. and Japan. And so we don't want to repeat the mistakes of history. And our people have been fighting uh, for more say in our future. Uh, we've been fighting to um, exercise our right you, to self-determination. Yep, you clearly, uh, and really you clearly I mean, you clearly feel that yet again, geopolitics is interfering in, in the lives of, of your people and the people of Guam. Uh, I mean, how is it affecting people psychologically? I mean, I particularly have two young children, a five-year-old and a two-year-old boy, and, uh, you know, explaining to them what this means, um, you know, is always something that is very real for me because this isn't the first time that we've been threatened uh, with an attack. Uh, and, you know, our experience living in a place that is so heavily militarized is that we regularly see and hear bombers. Uh, and for them, you know, to explain to them that, one day that could really drop a bomb. And, you know, my son, very simply, I asked him, I said, what would it mean if a, if a bomb hit Guam? And he just bowed his head and, you know, didn't even want to express the words. And so for them at such a young age to know that to live here in this beautiful paradise that is their homeland, uh, they run the risk of something like that is, is very terrifying. There are people here who live with PTSD from World War II, uh, our elders who, have experienced an attack and survived a war, and this brings back those memories for them. And um, does it, you know, even does it does it feel real? And and that might sound a bit of a strange question, but uh, you know, this yeah. is huge geopolitics that is being dealt with here, um, and 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 the tectonic plates feel as if they're shifting when you read the papers um, on this side of the world. Um, does it actually feel that it really could happen or that merely this is just more saber rattling? I think that we're dealing with two very unpredictable uh, men who are leading uh, this conversation in a very irresponsible way. And I wish that it actually felt more real in the sense that our people are not prepared for what we would actually physically do if a bomb were launched as North Korea is threatening in the waters near Guam. You know, there aren't, uh, I don't know where the nearest bunker is or fallout shelters. We aren't being prepared and the U.S. should have a responsibility to not just prepare its military personnel and dependents, um, but also us in a very real and physical way. What would happen? Uh, where would we go? Would we even survive it? Those are not actual conversations that are happening. Instead, we're just hearing all the rhetoric and being reassured, oh, it's not a real threat. Uh, Guam's threat level has not increased at all. Um, but I think that that, too, is uh, short-sighted and irresponsible on behalf of our, you know, the people that are leading us. We need more. We need to have um, a plan, no matter what, uh, you know, one of my uncles was saying, well, you know, this is like juveniles just doing drive-by shootings. But even in drive-by shootings, sometimes someone gets shot. And if Guam were to be shot or bombed, which is very serious, our people need to be prepared. And largely, our people need to have the opportunity to be sovereign and avoid these kinds of situations. We need to be able to negotiate better relationships with our neighbors. Uh, the U.S.'s presence here is largely touted as protecting us from these threats, but the reality is these threats exist because the U.S. is here. Victoria and Guam Guerra. is every other... Yes. Sorry to cut you off there, but thank you very much indeed uh, for explaining that, and uh, we hope that the anxiety levels reduce for you in the near future.